I try not to think about you at all, Marjorie. You'll be happy to know that our star remains stable. We've not seen any Tholian ships since the incident, thankfully. Still, the exploration initiative passed. Considering my experience, my people have chosen me to command the LSS Concordium. It was an honor I proudly accepted. Our ship is ready to go, and you are. For our maiden voyage, I've chosen a star that is close enough to be within reach, but still just outside the area of space that you've explored, and obviously one that we haven't visited yet. According to your star charts, it's a yellow-white star called 20 Draconis. of the system, there's a large field of rocky debris and asteroids. We're picking up various metals and crystalline formations. Should we approach one of the larger asteroids and take some more readings? Readings coming in now. Large quantities of silicate, hematite, kefnium, iridium. Crystalline structures appear to be the result of deposits created under a heavy impact. Perhaps this asteroid was part of a larger one that broke up in a collision. Heading deeper into the field may yield more clues. Sensors are picking up some movement on the far side of the asteroid. Not simple orbiting debris either. Cosmozoans, they're beautiful. Do you have any information about them? Intriguing. The Gekli communicate using radio waves and feed on dust particles and energy emissions. And, oh, it seems an adjustment of our EM band is in order. I don't like the idea of the Concordium becoming a Gekli food source. We've adjusted our power systems. I'd like to gather more data on the Gekli before we move on. Any suggestions? An excellent idea! We'll be able to track their movements and learn more about their migratory patterns and feeding habits. We'll need to get close in order to... Data's coming in from the Gekli. I'd like to expand the number of tagged subjects to optimize data collection. Let's get close enough to slip in with a pod and join them in their swimming. readings from all of the creatures. They're treating us like one of their own. 
trying to talk to us with their radio waves. not too far from here. This looks like a feeding ground for several Gekli pods. Let's go have a look. that several Gekli pods frequent this area. There's a lot of dust and particulate matter, but we can't see how the asteroids are getting broken down. I think there's something we're not seeing on the visible spectrum. Your ship has a stronger deflector than ours. Can you emit a particle wave? We could use that to illuminate things that might be happening in different spectra. off and break up the asteroids. That must be why the Gekli feed here. There's plenty of particulate matter for them to consume in the debris fields. I think we've collected some solid data here. We're ready to move on when you are. passing by this stellar body. They look to have an orbital period of about 173 of your standard years. I'd like to know if they came from outside of the system and were caught in its gravity, or if they originated here. Shut this comet is mostly ice and dust. There are indications that the cometary matter formed around a magnetic core. The other comets may be more interesting. Let's move to the other comets and study them closely. signs of magnetic radioactive matter. This comet may have seen some interesting particle fields in its wandering.
out its emissions. Based on the structure of its silicate crystals, it's been in a pattern. It picks up energy from its trip near the star, then loses that energy as it loops past the planets. It's like ice melting and refreezing, but it seems to lose a large quantity of energy all at once near here. I'm not sure why. The radioactivity... Hmm. These comets seem to have a long orbit that coincides with the orbit of a Class A planet nearby. I'd like to launch a probe and see if the cometary movements have had any impact on the planet. They are magnificent, aren't they? The creatures are luminescent ovoids? I'm not sure how to describe them. They remind me of an aquatic life form native to Lucari Prime. There are little ones huddling close to the planet's atmosphere. They must use the heat and the planet's electrical discharges to survive. Interesting. These life forms were encountered by the USS Enterprise D on Deneb 4, someplace called Far Point Station. They haven't been seen anywhere else since. We shouldn't harm them or their young. Let's transmit a greeting, then be on our way. They must be a form of communication. I didn't realize that life forms could exist in this fashion. Living off the heat of planets, feeding on the particles in space, absorbing radiation from the cosmos. There's so much to see. Let's head to the next planet in the system and see what's there. 